Namaste. In a previous video, we explored the three basic logic operations, and, or, and not. That was a convenient place to start because we have common words used for their logic. But those are not the only logic operations available. In this video, we'll explain other options and how to represent each in the forms of gate symbols, Boolean algebra, and truth tables. As we know, when we build circuits, the actual physical thing happening is that electrons are flowing through controlled routes. But for digital logic, we interpret the electrical signals as true or false. This is a basic idea of abstraction, or taking something from one form and interpreting it in another. We can also abstract logic operations. We begin with the logical concept, such as Tabitha will date Cody if he is tall and has red hair, and then represent it in another form. The three main forms you need here are gate symbols, Boolean algebra, and truth tables. All of these examples here show AND logic. Which form is most convenient to use depends on the application. Gate symbols are most useful for drawing and then wiring physical circuits. Boolean algebra is most useful for simplifying complicated expressions, much more on that in a later video. And truth tables can be used to start a design or analyze a circuit's operation, since they show exactly how the output should behave. As you'll learn, it's important to be able to transpose between any of these forms. In these next slides, I'll show the three representations for each of the eight basic logic operations. Let's start with AND and NAND. You are already well acquainted with AND. In words, you could describe it as, the output is true only if all the inputs are true. This concept is clearly supported by the truth table down here. The gate symbol for AND is shown up here, with arbitrary names for the input and output variables. Finally, the algebraic equation, using the same variables, is shown in the middle. The operator for AND is the middle dot. I put NAND next to AND because it is simply the opposite. In fact, the name NAND comes from a shortening of NOT AND. In words, the output is false only if all the inputs are true. Notice how the truth table shows the exact opposite output column compared to AND. This definition is reflected in the gate symbol. Anytime you see an empty bubble in a logic circuit, interpret it as not. So, this symbol shows clearly that you AND first, then NOT later. Similarly, the equation shows the same steps. You AND first, inside the parentheses, then take that result and NOT it. A common mistake that you want to avoid is to look at the name NAND and think that it means not first and later. This is backward. Looking at the word structure, AND is the root word and NOT is the modifier. Therefore, this means AND first, not later. Those same patterns are seen here when comparing OR and NOR. As you know, OR logic outputs true if at least one input is true. The gate symbol for OR looks like a sideways shield. The algebraic operator is a plus sign. On the right side, we see NOR, which is short for NOT OR. In other words, OR first and NOT later. That idea is reflected here in the gate symbol, with the OR symbol followed by the empty bubble. It is seen here in the equation, where we perform OR within the parentheses, and then NOT that result. Finally, it is seen in the truth table, where the output column is exactly the complement of the OR table. This slide introduces a new wrinkle. XOR is short for exclusive OR. That word exclusive tells us that one and only one input must be true in order for the output to be true. Notice in this truth table that Y equals zero when both A and B are one. Side note, this definition works with the two input operation, but not for more inputs. More on that in a couple of slides. The gate symbol for exclusive OR is shown here. It looks just like the OR symbol, but with an extra arc in front. The algebraic operator looks like this, with a plus sign inside a circle. There are two ways of interpreting exclusive NOR logic. The first is as the even operator. 
it will output a true if an even number of inputs are true. You can see that in the truth table. Perhaps easier to understand is that XNOR is the complement of XOR. This is also readily apparent in the truth table. You can see this in the gate symbols with the empty bubble tacked onto the end, as well as the equation with the NOT operation done after the XOR operation. The last two logic operations here are the simplest. A buffer does nothing to change the logic. It simply accepts an input and passes it directly to the output. It seems silly, right? Why even use a gate for this in a circuit? There are a couple good reasons. The best is when we employ a tri-state buffer, which can stop a signal altogether. But we'll discuss that in more detail later in the course. In the NOT operation, we have already discussed. You could call this symbol a NOT gate, an inverter, or a complementer. All of those are just different names for the same idea. If the input is false, make the output true, and vice versa. The gate symbol is simply a buffer with an empty bubble at the end. The algebraic operator is this prime symbol. Buffers and NOT gates always have one input, period. But the other logic gates, AND, NOR, XOR, etc., can have any number of inputs, two or greater. On the left is an example of a four input AND gate. The symbol is the same. There are now simply four input lines. And the equation is written with the middle dot placed between each variable. On the right is an example of a three input NOR gate. No surprises in the gate symbol. For writing the equation, include all of the variables inside the parentheses and apply the prime outside the parentheses. In both representations, you treat the logic as OR first, not later. Timing diagrams are a useful tool for analyzing circuits that have already been built. They are also useful for testing our knowledge of how logic operations work. What you see in this example is one timing diagram with three waveforms. Each waveform can jump between zero or one. In reality, zero would be near zero volts and one would be near five volts for our hardware labs. But conceptually, we could call one true or high and we could call zero false or low. Two waveforms show the input signals A and B. These operate independently. You can think of them as light switches that different people are controlling. The last waveform shows the output signal U. This is a function of the input signals passed through the logic gate. You can think of this as the light bulb that may be on or off. Here we see an AND gate. What's the logic? Only when both inputs are true will the output be true. So in this first time segment, A is low and B is high, the result is that U is low. In the next time segment, A is high and B is high, so U will be high. We could continue, but the point is clear. U will respond directly to the inputs A and B. Important to keep in mind is that this is an idealized timing diagram, which shows immediate jumps from zero to one and immediate responses by U. In real physical circuits, we need to consider propagation delay, but that is for a later discussion. All right, last slide for today. Here we see a more accurate definition of exclusive OR. Grammatically, the name should mean that one and only one true input produces a true output. In reality, an XOR operation works as an odd function. This means it will output one if there are an odd number of ones on the inputs. You can see that demonstrated in this truth table. Hey, look how useful truth tables are. Notice how when there is just one true input, the output is true. But also when there are three true inputs, the output is true. The same pattern would hold for four input, eight input, or 29 input exclusive OR gate. Why does it function this way? My postulate is that the first people who built a three input exclusive OR gate did so by combining two two input gates, like you see here. Notice that if all three inputs equal one, then this first gate outputs zero, and the final gate outputs one. This matches the final row of the truth table.